Hey guys, uh, this is Miss Max Sox here, and today I want to talk about uh, a new terminology I like to call Perfect Zero, or aka how to hit your full board optimally. So Perfect Zero is this new phrase uh, that I'm coming up with. I don't really have a better name for it, so I'm calling it Perfect Zero for the sake of this guide. Uh, maybe one day it will be updated. But for now, um, it's I'm using it to describe the following. So for a lot of compositions in this game, uh, after a certain point, they have no more use for gold, and you want to hit your entire board with zero gold left. Um, I'll provide some more examples uh, uh, later in the guide, but to give you some motivation is why would you want to hit your board with zero gold? Uh, that's because if you hit your board with zero gold, that necessarily means that you actually hit your board a lot earlier than you would have otherwise. Because often it means that you're spending 50 gold all the way down to zero, so you're hitting your board about five turns ahead of when you would actually hit your board. Um, if you hit your board earlier, it usually means that you're playing a stronger board for a, uh, a, a lot more amount of turns, which usually means you get a higher, higher, higher average placement. And this idea should only be used when you're playing for placements, not when you're playing for first. Because when you're playing for first, you want to cap out your board as hard as possible. When you're playing for a uh, placement, then once you hit your full board, um, it's you usually don't want to use usually have no more use for gold anymore. So let me give you an example because I think it's a little bit confusing. So let's take this ta uh, talent comp, right? At level 6, most people know down to roll down for 2 star everything. And then afterwards, everybody usually econs back up to 50 and then slow rolls for the rest of the game. Um, so usually when you're playing this talent comp, you actually uh, dip pretty low into HP. And then you stabilize once you hit 2 star talent. And then once again at stage 4 and stage 5, you start losing HP again um, due to people hitting their 2 star forecast. And then once you uh, hit... Talent 3, you stabilize again, and then at around stage 5, you usually start losing to people who hit their 2 star 5 cost or cap out their board even harder. So for this talent comp, you can see that there's a, a, some very, very clear spike intervals. The biggest spike interval after you hit your talent 2 is you need to hit talent 3. Once you hit talent 3, you have no more upgrades for the rest of the game. Once you hit talent 3, there's nothing you can put on your board to make it stronger, right? The only thing you can go do is to either uh, go level 8 to play 4 Assassin, which is not very strong, go level 8 to play 4 Debonairs, which is not very strong, or you have to hit 0-2 or Leona 2. So those are the only 4 ways to actually make your board stronger. And why is that the case? Why is ta why is this composition so hard to make stronger? But that's because um, Talon already has all his synergies online, right? He has, already has 2 Assassins, he already has 3 Debonairs to activate his true damage. Adding 5 Debonairs doesn't increase Talon's true damage by a lot, and adding uh, 4 Assassins doesn't also does increase uh, Talon's talents uh, damage by a lot. So there's actually no way for your board to get stronger um, without hitting an al alternative carry like Zero 2. So this is the perfect uh, scenario for Perfect Zero. To give you some more motivation on why Perfect Zero is relevant, let's just say you have uh, 8 talents. And let's just say by some magic, um, well, let's just say by some magic for now. But later we'll use uh, expected value as this magic the terminology. But let's just say by some magic, we know we'll hit a talent in 25 rolls. If we slow roll here, and so we're spending 10 gold per turn, we will hit the talent in exactly 5 turns, right? So that's uh, 25 rolls, so just 50 gold, 10 gold per turn, so that's uh, 5 turns. Now, 5 turns of running talent 2 is a lot of HP loss, so that's not very good, because now you're losing, often talent 3 wins a fight, while talent 2 loses, and losing a fight could cost upwards of 10 HP. So this is easily paying like uh, 50 HP uh, for this. It's not always the case, but let's just say as an example. Uh, the benefits of slow rolling, of course, is that after you hit your talent two, uh, after you hit your talent three, you will still have fifty gold left over because you're slow rolling the whole time, and you, then you can go for the next big upgrade, right? And if you're playing for first, so you already have a lot of HP and you have a high amount of gold, then like losing the extra bit of HP doesn't matter that much because now you have additional fifty gold to work with, which allows you to cap out higher. But let's just say you're not high rolling, you're not high HP, you're not high gold. Uh, or you're not high HP, what do you do? So let's just say we try to go for perfect zero. We roll down all our gold, and this turn, we will hit talent three with exactly zero gold in the bank. This is the most optimal uh, scenario for perfect zero, because now you hit talent three, and now you're not gonna upgrade your board anyways for the next X amount of turns. And you know, previously you would have lost five rounds with talent two. Now you will win uh, these five rounds with talent three. Once again, to iterate, reiterate, the gold is useless once we hit talent three because our next upgrade will cost a lot more money in the uh, in the um, idea of hitting Leona three or zero two. So if you're low rolling, perfect zero will let you edge out many, many, many placements, and it often allows you to change like a bottom four to a top four very, very common and very, very easily. So here's some other examples of perfect uh, zero in the event that you guys don't like uh, see it. Let's just say 
you're really close to GP, but you're far away from Lucian, right? Often this is the case that you want to hit both your spikes at the same time. You want to hit GP and Lucian, but sometimes it just happens that you hit like seven GPs and like zero Lucians. You can try to go for perfect zero on GP in order to and sack Lucian. So you're forfeiting your chances of hitting Lucian three, but now you have a much, much higher chance of hitting GP three very, very early. So same thing for Warwick comps, Warwick comps often try to perfect zero for Warwick because the moment you hit Warwick, you have no more real upgrades for your composition. Once you hit Warwick at level six, uh, going seven doesn't make you that much stronger and going eight certainly doesn't make you that much stronger. And then for a lot of forecast carries, you want to try to perfect zero uh, to two star them. So Silver, I really gen. These are some of the common ones I, I try to hit two star. And you want to hit them and you want to hit your entire board and these uh, carries with zero gold left. Because often, once you hit your units 2 star, you don't need any more gold, and your next upgrade is to go 9. And so you want to hit them as early as possible in order to save HP. So now, the hard part. The hardest thing in the world, how do you perfect 0? So, let's just say you're level 60, you're 50 gold and 7 talents, do you go for perfect 0 here? So do you roll down all your gold? So I, I went I actually found this website, it was really, really helpful. And all it does is that you can put in the champion that you're looking for. So let's just say you're looking for 2 cost, and let's just say you're level 6. And let's just put that you've already bought seven units and number of the units already bought is a one, sure. And if you want to roll 50 gold right here, right? You want to roll 50 gold. The chances of you hitting two talents right here shows you that it's 65%. And now let's just say, like, would, would you take those odds? And now it's really, really difficult, right? So now we have to weigh our two options here. So let's just say you perfect zero here. Um, let's just say you econ, you slow roll here. So you econ two rounds. Um, so now you go from 50 gold and econ two rounds, right? So that you have 60 gold and 70 gold because um, 5 gold from base, 5 gold plus interest. You have 70 gold, now you have 7 talents. Putting that into the equation, you can see that it is, it gives you an 82% chance of hitting talent 3. So that's pretty good. That's really, really good. It's uh, like 4 and 5 games, you're going to hit talent 3. So if you don't, perf if you uh, do perfect 0, here, let me correct that right now. If you do perfect 0 right here, uh, so turn one, you roll down 50 gold. Putting that into the equation, you have a 65% chance of hitting. Turn two, you roll down five more gold, right, because of base gold. Now you have a 75% ch chance of hitting. And turn three, you roll down another five gold, you'll have a 75% chance of hitting. To, to clarify how, uh, how I got these numbers, first turn I put 50, and I got this number. Second term, I put 56, I just rounded up, and I got this number. And the second turn, I put 60, right? That's the total of gold amount you used. So you can tell that the difference between perfect zero here and then econing two turns and rolling it down is that one gives you an 80 percent huge chance of hitting, one gives you a 75 percent chance of hitting. So you're losing so 75 percent odds. However, if you do perfect zero, 75 65 percent of the games you're gonna hit two turns ahead than if you um waited two turns, right? So like basically you're losing seven seven percent odds in order to hit the uh, talent two turns earlier. For me, that sounds like a very, very worthwhile trade. And then, how do you apply this to a more general case? Hey guys, so I noticed that only a small percentage of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. Uh, so if you like my content, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications to make sure that my content gets to you on time. It's not just forecast, it's just a lot of different scenarios where perfect zero is the optimal play. And I want to say that this is very difficult because I don't know, and this is one of the most advanced concepts that like even the best players are still figuring out. Um, like I would say that this is definitely a concept you should not be applying or what's it called you should, you should think about, but you should like not actively be like trying to go for this every game until you have a very, very solid of your fundamentals. And I wanted to shout out to a one of my good friend Goobumps, um, uh, for not uh, for teaching me this. Well, we were prepping for regionals, and he was like giving me a lot of tips on how to like play the game and like work on my fundamentals. And well, this is the one of the concepts that uh, he told me about. I, I'm pretty sure he learned this from Newbell, so probably shout out to Newbell as well. And I know that there's some other players who are really, really uh, good at applying these concepts, like um, Ramblin. But Honestly, it's just a like starting point to think about uh, how to play TFT, TFT at a more optimal level because I think uh, not enough people make uh, guides on like super advanced topics, so I definitely want to cover uh, this one.